Hi, and welcome to uh, Comic Style Coloring the Spawn Way. Um, I'm going to take you through a spawn cover I did uh, a couple of years ago that's always been a personal favorite. Uh, and I'm going to take you through every step from scanning, flatting, to final coloring. Uh, if you guys are already good on your scanning and your flatting, please feel free to skip ahead. A lot of people have been asking me for the whole package, so... That's what we're going to do. I have an 11 by 17 scanner. Um, it's an Epson 1640XL, I believe. Uh, and I'm very happy with it. But um, uh, let me step back for a second. Most original art uh, for complex is done on 11 by 17 boards. Uh, that's why it's nice to have an 11 by 17 scanner. Uh, but most people don't want to show the money for a 11 by 17 scanner. And for years, when I was first starting to do this stuff, I scanned on 8.5 by 11 scanners and just pieced them together. Uh, the trick is when you do that, just make sure you scan with a little bit of, uh, of uh, overlap. It'll make it easier for you to put the halves together. Um, but uh, that's a fine way of doing it as well. And, and you can get scanners that are practically state-of-the-art five years ago today. They're brand new, you know, for... 99 bucks and stuff, so, you know, uh, I also have the small version of my 1640, which is a great scanner as well, so, uh, I'm going to scan in grayscale, <coughs> and I'm going to let, uh, I'm not going to let the scanner decide much for me. I like making these decisions myself. I mean, you could scan in black and white bitmap mode and let the scanner make a lot of decisions, but I'd rather have some control with levels and such, and I think you get a better scan at the end of the day. So, anyway, I'm just going to go do a, a raw grayscale scan. If you have uh, stuff, too, that, that that's very fine or, or, or kind of stubborn for you to scan, I would suggest scanning it even in RGB and then do your levels and retouch a little bit and then get it to grayscale if you have to or black and white if you have to. Cause you just have more information to work with. Okay, this is, again, pretty much what the original art looks like. Um, you'll see there's some uh, pe straight pencil marks uh, and color note. Todd uh, had in mind some shafts of light coming down, and he wanted to indicate to me where those would be. Um, for your first uh, step in, in cleaning up a scan, get a little closer so you can see what's kind of going on see what you're losing, see what you're keeping. And go ahead and go to levels. Pull in your black so you can see that your black areas are nice and black. And then pull in the white areas. So you see most of those pencil marks going away. And you don't want to do too much. See, if I, if I go too far, it gets a little too thin on us. This looks pretty good. Again, I'll just do a quick loop around to make sure I'm not missing anything. And hit OK at that point. Now if I notice there are some little bits of stuff, I'll use the dodge and burn tool on highlights to, to get rid of, uh, you know, further kind of use it like an eraser and get rid of little stray pencil marks if I see any. Nope. I don't see any. Now if you want to, I'll zoom in a little closer. This is a trick that sometimes is useful, though I, I gotta tell you, this new scanner is really picking up all the detail very nicely for me. But in case your scanner doesn't, Something to try uh, is to go in and use an unsharp mask. About the settings I have here are pretty good. 
stay okay. So you can see the before and after. Really, again, this scan was, was pretty darn good, but um, I mean, he still, still sharpens it up just a little bit. I'm not going to do it on this, but I just wanted to show it to you guys in case you want to use it as a trick to bring out a little more detail in your scans. Alright, I'm going to go to the pencil tool just to clean up some other stray little things real quick. And Todd's note to put in cool sky and lighting effect. I'll remember that. Okay. Uh, now I've talked before about most scans for um, most comic work are just purely black and white, which means bitmap. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we're going real close here. You'll see there's shades of gray in this line art. Okay. And what we're going to do is mode change this to bitmap. We want to keep it the same DPI that we scanned it at and use a 50% threshold method. If we don't use 50% threshold, then we'll get dot patterns or basically our other options. And we don't want to do that. We just want black and white, black where the ink lines are and white where the paper was. So I'll do OK. And now you can see that the gray is gone. Undo it. See? With gray, without gray, with gray, without gray. Okay. Now let's go ahead and save this because this is be our line art. We want to keep our line art. Nice and high res and, and and clean for us to grab later because we're not going to color at 300 dpi because that would be too much of a strain on most machines um, we don't need to color that high res because most color is is screen and isn't necessarily reproduced at the high resolution that line art is that's why we keep the line art separate until we're ready to res back up our color um, so I'm going to res this down, but I'm going to convert it to grayscale first so I can have it look smooth. If I resize down the bitmap and then copy it over to an RGB, it will look all stair-stepped when I bring it back down in size. So that's all fine with one. Now I'm going to image size it. And I'm going to go ahead and color this at 150 dpi. Yeah, let's cover. Let's make it 200 dpi. Interiors, uh, if you love my 17, I don't mind coloring them at 150. It usually works out just fine. For covers, and sometimes they run at higher line screen, uh, I'll go ahead and color those either at same size, 300 or 200. But because we're, this tutorial can only go so long, I need to have a little bit of speed on my side. All right. This is our lower res version. Now... I'm going to convert it again to RGB color. The color in RGB. I'm going to select all and I'm going to control or command cut that file out, add another layer. On that new layer, I'm going to paste it back in. I'm going to set it into multiply mode. Okay, so our background layer is going to be what I'm going to color on. Our top layer is in multiply mode. And what that means by having it in multiply mode is, let me just put it in some big broad brush strokes of color. If I start coloring, you can see the color, but it doesn't block out the line art. Okay, so now we're going to do the next step. 
flats, which again, people have asked me for. Flats are basically, you're gonna fill each part, like from the mask, spawns, costume color, the wings, each separate part like that is gonna be a different basic color. So it'll be easier for you to, to magic wand the area if you need to rework or change a color for an art director or for an editor, or even just simply experiment more as you're working with the piece. Um, and you'll keep the flats after you do them in either in a channel or another layer, so they're always there for you to go back to to, to, to pick at. Um, so let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna start the flats, and then I'm gonna do an easy bake oven thing. Sorry, I have some flats that I finished. So, I'm on the background layer. I'm gonna, I usually like my flats to be sort of monochromatic, so I'm gonna kind of do a cool gray thing here. First thing, I'm gonna fill the whole thing with color. Take the color, fill it. Sort of like a painterly thing, just thinking of toning the canvas. And then, with the lasso tool, very important, lasso tool is not anti-alias, and there's no feathering on it. The reason why, because if you go back to with your magic wand to pick an area that you has an anti-alias line, you'll get a halo between whatever the color is you're picking and whatever the color is beside it, and you don't want that. So anyway, you just go in with the lasso tool, and I'll hold the, uh, the Alt key, so I can pick up and it anchors it, but I still have my redrawing. I'm just going in and I'm basically selecting the whole area of the wing and I'm going to fill it with one solid color. I should say one flat solid color. It doesn't matter if I go into spawn at this point because I'm going to Basically, you work from background to foreground when you do flats, and since spawns in front of the wings, I'm going to go right over what I'm doing here anyway. I'm going to pick up a little bit of a lighter color for these. And I did Alt Delete and that filled with foreground color. And you just continue like this, it's like tracing. It basically is tracing an outline of the uh, piece you're doing. We flat, um, not only so we can change things, but also since we do color in a f sort of assembly line fashion, we often ha we have flatters who exclusively do flats for our colorists, and that allows them to really get in there and attack pages very quickly. Because we do have so many pages that we color. We have about 16 books a month or so that come through the studio. Or just color. All right. Almost done with the wing. All right. 
And this will have all those being, being done. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Remember to save. I'm going to keep the compatibility uh, maximized because uh, I'm sure there'll be some people, because this file will be included on the CD, and I'm sure there should be some people who will run some older photoshops who want to open it, and that's the reason why you would have maximized compatibility on. If you're just worried about Photoshop 7, then you don't have it, have it on, and it will give you smaller file sizes. Okay, now the next bit, let's do all spawn. I'm also coloring at 800 by 600, so as my producer tells me, it will run better on most people's machines. Uh, so you'll notice my Photoshop is a little cramped. I normally like looking, working at minimum 1024 by 768, and, and the higher res, the better. You know some little uh, holes in some of the blacks. It's not even bad scanning. It's because they did some splatter on this piece, and I'll show that to you when we get over there. And again, we're just getting all the spawns, figure in general. See down here, the splatter's real heavy because Todd made him actually disappear into the splatter. So I'm just going to go loose down there because I'm going to fade off the color and fade off this line work down at the bottom when I'm done. Again, holding down the Alt key so I can have an anchored lasso as I'm also just drawing, so in case you get tired or whatever. There. Uh, a fairly dark color for spawn. Do his face mask over here. Don't worry about flatting when you go into a big black area because it doesn't matter if you go into it because there's going to be black on top of the color. So. And we go for a lighter color. Eyes. Uh, these big forearm pieces that are red. Now I'm going to go ahead and go off here, go into the hand. I'm 
And see how um, I'm going to have a tolerance when I do. I'll go ahead and use the uh, bucket tool here. And I'll have a tolerance on zero. Okay. Uh, tolerance on zero. Thank you. I'm going to start red. And I'll bucket fill it. Oops. It's using all layers. And there it stops, see? Even though this was lassoed all the way out here, it stopped at the lighter color. And that's handy, so I didn't have to like trace that edge or anything. Go over here, do the same. Get the bracer start about up here. It goes over this part of the hand. Again, bucket fill, there we go. I got spikes to do, and then I'm basically done with the flats for this. It's a pretty easy piece to create, just a single figure. Again, I can go into the other part of the red. And I'll do it up here to this other spike. There. Oops. And those are your flats. Let's see. Now I made a mistake of not cropping him tight enough, so normally on the cover it's going to be much smaller than this, but I can't crop, you have to be very careful, don't crop this image after you've scanned it and, and, and res it down, because you're going to res it back up and you're going to want your original scan and line art just to be able to plop right over it. You don't want to have to be moving that thing around and lining it up. Uh, if this stays the same proportion, then great. So to make up for my mistake, I'm just going to add another layer, and I'm going to make a frame so I don't really have to worry about what's not going to show on the image. Inverse the selection. And then just fill it. Okay. I'm going to uh, make a copy of our uh, background. Now you can just drag it onto the little square here and I'll make a copy. So that'll be, I'm just going to leave the eye off that. That's going to be a uh, just reserved copy of our flats. You can also copy it, make a new channel and paste in a channel if you want. That'll, that'll be a smaller file size than to create a whole layer. But, but uh, Photoshop 4 is very, uh, very, uh, efficient with its layers. Uh, I wouldn't work layers too much in Photoshop 3, but from Photoshop 4 on up, I think you're good because their, their management, memory management for that is much better. All right, um, I'm going to work uh, background foreground. And I always kind of think of these things as working on a painting, and uh, Todd specified a very dramatic sort of sky, so I'm going to lay in a color back there. I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'm going to have tolerance of zero because I have all flats now, flat colors. Uh, I just want to pick the one color, so tolerance of zero, no anti alias. And then just filling it with a solid color. I'm going to darken that up a little bit. So I need to use human saturation. Working a little bit. I'm going to go ahead with the gradient tool. I'm going to pick a lighter color. Something maybe 
we got foreground to transparent on that pull. Not quite that much, so let's go ahead and drop the opacity and do that again. Yeah, that seems about right to me. Uh, I'm going to start laying in some cloud shapes. I'm going to use the brush tool. And I have a, uh, a specifically an airbrush brush that I've created that you guys will have on the CD too if you want to use it. It's very similar to the earlier regular Photoshop airbrushes uh, that I used to use a lot. Um, I'm going to pick a darker color, a little more desaturated for the cloud shapes. And I'm just going to go in and start, you know, laying in some shapes. Really kind of basic. Since these are uh, clouds, if you wanted to, you could even, if you wanted to go really fast with your backgrounds, you could do these backgrounds at about 100 dpi or, 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 or less and just rest them up because they're all sort of airbrushy, you know, smooth skies and they're really are tolerant to that sort of re resing. Uh, just work on it you know, on a separate file and such. Just sort of, you know, roughing in some, some shapes. I know it doesn't look like much or nothing yet, but not many art pieces do when you're starting them. <laughs> you just can't get too impatient. Just kind of building this stuff up. There's going to be a light coming in. I'm probably going to do on another layer with an effect layer. So again, we're just dealing with some clouds and stuff. And I really just want to, at this stage, get something back there that I can work with while I'm coloring the uh, spawn figure itself. colors are and such. Roughing in some shapes. If you, if you, uh, you know, don't feel very confident about doing this sort of thing, just uh, you know, go on to Google and go on the image section or the where you can browse and search images, and just you know, type in dramatic sky or a sunset sky or something, and and you'll find some pictures there that you can use as reference. By all means, never, you know, copy and paste that stuff into the background. Um, but, you know, looking at it and going, oh, that's how a cloud kind of works and it's kind of set up, uh, kind of helps a lot. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to jump to the uh, Dodge tool on highlights and I'm going to start picking out. Now I'm going to have a light coming down from straight above, so I'm going to start uh, just picking out some highlights on top of some of these clouds to help start giving them that shape. I'm just sort of scrumbling with the dodge tool. But you can see already on these little things aren't doing a whole lot of anything. All of a sudden they're beginning to read like clouds with that simple highlight. Remember, they have 
of the shapes and forms. All these are going to be kind of a cumulus y kind of shape. I'll play with some other things, but you know, most dramatic cumulus thunderhead sort of. Heavenly light coming down once I'm set with that. So all this sort of lighting I'm thinking in my head is coming from that heavenly light that I'm going to be doing a little later. But uh, I do know essentially its direction so I can start affecting my objects that I've created with it. Gotta be careful with the dodge tool. If you you know do it use it too much, see how that kind of ah what the heck is that? You want to have it on a fairly low opacity to keep control of it. I got it on a thirty. Again, I'm just sort of laying in a little bit of that brightness where I'm gonna know I'm gonna add it later. You know, I really could uh, um, call this thing finished, uh, but I really want to go another step on it. If I hold down, by the way, the Alt key, I can make the uh, the uh, Dodge tool will will then convert into the uh, the Burn tool. Let's see what I'm burning up here in this. And vice versa. All right. So now I'm going to start doing some sculpting in these clouds with uh, the uh, smudge tool and a fairly hard round brush. Yeah. Start really kind of sculpting the heads for these guys. You can really control, you can see how I'm pulling in the highlight part a little bit. It's kind of like, um, if you ever done oil painting or pastel or, or even pencil or charcoal, it's like kind of smudging that stuff around. I think it's probably most like like uh, like oils and pastel though. I'm switching to the dodge tool, I'm gonna again this kind of another head on this one cloud. I can really start adding some nice detail in here with that smudge tool. Really kind of painterly. Very pretty. Just using sort of round motion. If I go lightly over an area, back and forth and back and forth, then I can sort of just begin smoothing it out, sort of like a very controlled 
blur at that point. You can always go back to, to uh, brush tool too to smooth things out. I'm holding the alt key so I'm picking from the, uh, the colors there. Into the storm cloud. Going back to the smudge tool again. Again, I think you can really see how you really help shape these things and give them a bit of an illusion. Yeah, a little harsh, so I'm just going to soften it up with the brush tool. Again, shaping this outside a bit, pulling here, yeah, I can pull a little bit of the shape in there. You can get really strokey with this stuff if you want to, add a little more texture in there. And then I'm back with the brush tool again. Find some of the shapes a little bit more. Dramatic sky in ten minutes. <laughs> see I mean, it kind of comes together it's not the most perfect thing in the world but it gives you the illusion okay. I think I'll feel comfortable working in this now I'm going to go ahead and, and jump in and start coloring with the uh, figure and I'll, I'll jump back to the sky again later when I'm ready to do the effect on it with the heavenly light. This spawn early on, and, and you might see we've been doing spawn 
since I think issue 41 now, and it's on one issue 133 now, so we're getting close to our 100th issue anniversary on this book. Um, when Spawn started, he was a uh, dark blue, sort of uh, a darker version of a Spider-Man blue, but as it kind of went on, he became more and more of a dark gray. The suit, I mean, the suit was always with black, and not the neon comic books, blue becomes black, but... We try and treat it more as dark as we can do black without losing detail in the ink. So, a dark, cool gray is what I have here. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now, what I normally do is I attack these things where I know where my light source is. It's going to be a warm light coming from above. And then I'm going to have some, some cool, a little bit of a cool sort of reflected light, almost like, though you can't see it in the picture, that there's 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 either snow or, or, or uh, pool of, of, of still calm water that he's floating over or something. But anyway, uh, again, the idea is to be dramatic with this, so that's what I'm getting for. So, um, I think I'm happy with this as my dark, so I'm just going to work to light. I usually work dark to light, so I'm going to leave that flat. I'm just going to go ahead with a brush tool and start laying in some, some basic... Uh, Shapes here. Let me pick a color. It's warm, but not too. Let's see where that looks. Yeah, looks about right. All right, and just uh, again, I'm just I'm just sort of doing these basic shapes here. Um, Shape of the chest getting hit. This area getting hit with a little bit of that warm color. A little bit of that ab coming through. A little bit here. A little bit here on the thigh. A little bit of that arm. Again, kind of think of things in, in uh, terms of you know, tubes and spheres and how they're lit. A little bit here. And again, just really, really roughing in. Um, and then uh, I'm going to have a bit of a cool, I'm going to really kind of darken and desaturate it. And that'll be all shadow conditions. With the shadow from his head there that I'm making a little bit of a bluish underneath his pectoral, underneath his deltoid. Back here, the thigh. The end of part of his abdomen. And back here. So that's kind of like the really unfinished, rough, non sculpted version. Okay, then what I'll do is I'll come back in and I'll start getting more to. I mean, think of those kind of our mid tone dilated. Now we're going to go more towards between the mid tones and the highlights and get to the highlights. And this is where we're going to start cutting. Shapes of the lasso tool. The lasso tool is uh, is uh, is uh, not anti-alias. There's no feather on it, but you could do that if you wanted to. I'd, I'd rather kind of keep it hard, and then I uh, I uh, can always use a, a smudge tool or whatever to kind of soften it up later if I want to, and I'll show you some of that when we get to the wings, some techniques for doing that. Anyway, let me get back to spawn. Okay. I just hit the selection. And I just want to hit, you know, part of it and let it fade away. I'm not trying to hit the whole shape that I'm, that I'm selecting here. You want to see someone who's really good at doing that. Look at some old uh, Vargas paint. This is great. You can tell where he cut the shape and then just let it kind of fade off. The heads on the different muscles there.
chest. I'm doing mimicking starvations that that, that Greg and and, and, and and Todd did over here. You know, I'm not doing full hard hit. This is not the brightest that we're gonna go here. I'm just kind of getting an A more defined mid-tone. I'm holding the shift key down so I can do multiple selections at once. And I'm hiding it. And the brush tool, and I'm getting, hitting harder up here, and then letting it fade out. Sometimes you might want to, I have it on 50% 57% opacity. Uh, if you're beginning with this stuff, I, I would probably start even lower than that, because it'll allow you to have more control. And the shapes you're cutting, think French curves, think smooth, think following the form. Again, I'm going to be light here and then a heavier hand up top. Doing some of this rib area in here. Again, I'm holding the shift key. I'm going to go high, harder up on top of the thigh, so light is fading off. Unless I use a, a HSB picker, I think it's better. It's easier to pick color families this way and control your saturation and the brightness of your color. I'm going to go to brighter color now because I want to go more like to the highlights on these areas that I cut. Your face too. Again, I'm going to hit harder up on top of the shape. Try to fade off a little bit. on top. Ooh, that's hard. Again, I'm just kind of going with the direction of the light here. And the accent by this muscle, sometimes you can get some very powerful effects by putting a light right next to a dark. Okay. 
And that's pretty much our warm colors. Now let me go in and render in those reflected area lights that I talked about before. And when it's warm, it's kind of generally following the warm light, cool shadow, but this isn't really truly a shadow. It, it really is more getting some a little more light than that. It's getting kind of a reflected or double light, even though it's not really a light light shining on it. And it's not that bright. I'm hitting pretty lightly here with this color. Okay, I'm just kind of lightly hitting in there. Now I find that I don't like some of it. I can always deselect it to a little bit of a darker color. Yeah, I'm just going to lightly push it back. Pick back from the uh, so. a bit more shape. But essentially that's the spawn body done. Sometimes it's kind of fun to look at these things without the uh, line art. And when I do a digital painting, it really essentially is attacked a lot in a very similar way. Just the level of rendering is what makes things different. But I'm going to save. I should have probably done it before now. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, do the face mask and his arm bits, and then we'll jump to the wings. Okay. Magic wand. You'll notice that the uh, magic wand didn't catch the whole area because I went over this bottom area of the mask with a little bit of that uh, bluish reflective color. Um, since the magic wand is sent to zero, it only got the gray, that is the black color. But that's okay for what I'm doing right now. Okay. I'm just going to loose airbrush the model first, and then I'll go in and do my frisket cuts. Now, if you want to, I mean, you can just keep doing the airbrush as well if you don't like those. 
those cuts that people use a lot in the comic style and stuff right now, you could just keep rendering with the airbrush until it's finished. Uh, a friend of mine, Drew, does a very good job of, of doing that. I mean, stuff gets practically photorealistic. All right. Now I'm going to lay in... Um, some of the warm again he's being hit but <coughs> from light from directly above now I'll do some brisket shapes these bags of his eyes come out right about there his cheek Bones come out right about there. This arch we highlighted there. Top part of the head. I'm a very bright color for this. Again, just going to use a light touch. Build up the color. Once you get. <coughs> more used to doing this you can always uh, you know, go for the one stroke that's always the the optimal is you always want to be able to do the whole thing in one stroke rather than fudging around with it alright I'm going to give it a little bit of that blue that I had And I'm gonna use a little bit of a rim highlight here. Okay, I'm going to do the eyes. I started already with my base in the eyes, now I'm just going to have those reflect. And since the eyeballs are kind of hard and shiny, I'm just going to reflect some of that uh, background-y color. And then the smaller selection for a uh, smaller, brighter, harder highlight, which is something that Shiny gets. Then Shiny has <coughs> very small, very bright little highlights. If you ever do any 3D work, it's, it's cool because then you can really set up how materials work and see how they work. But it's also even better than that, have some different objects around your uh, table while you're coloring, a metal ball or whatever, and you can see how the light works when it hits it. Again, just kind of roughing in the shape first with a quick brush. Again, the brush I have is in my uh, airbrush mode. If you ever get lost in anything, you can always pretty much read all these. Something that's high in resolution that you can see what's going on in most of my palettes. You can pause it and you can check out exactly what the color settings are and the, what layer I'm on and blah blah blah, all that stuff. His um, bracers have become more and more and more sort of, I don't want to say distressed, but they're definitely textural. But I'm just following again what they have there. And I'll do some brighter ones as well. I see this thing have <coughs> this arm part having a little bit of a sheen to it. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Okay, let's do 
the other one. Again, just kind of lightly. Again, that shape would be kind of a tube shape if you had to think of it that way. Holding the shift key down again, that's how you get the multiple selections. I'm go a little brighter. And someone's right along the highlight area. Oh, that look nice. The hands need a little bit. I'm just going to do a couple quick things because they're mostly black. I really don't need to do hardly anything to them. Just going to take a little bit of that warm color. Hit them. Do a quick. Another highlight color from something I've already done. I'm just eye dropping it. Okay, let's do it with spikes. The spikes, Greg already drew, drew a horizon line. Anything that's sort of reflected and shiny, a horizon line is the key to uh, making it work. If you, if you want to see some nice illustrated reference from metal, you can always look at Jaime Shiryama's work is wonderful, or work at, look at some real chrome. But anyway, um, so it's going to be warm on top, cool on the bottom. Do the warm part now. And do the cool part. And if you want that to play as metal, you want to do a little hard highlight. I'm almost going to go to white. Well, you see how that automatically gives a little bit of a, a little bit of a gleam and a little bit again changes the surface texture. Who would want soft spikes? Huh? You know, I'm picking that base color and I'm bringing up the saturation a little bit, bringing up the brightness to get that harder highlight color that I'm hitting. Alrighty. Right, Spawn himself is now done. Let's go ahead and attack the wings. All right, I want them to be more of a off-white. I kill that. <coughs> Move my swatches up here. All right, mm, something like that. I'll delete and is that gonna work for my base? No, I want to be a little bit more like that. It's too peachy at the moment. I don't want it to be so peachy. All right, I can make that work. Okay. Now again, I'm just gonna. Hide the selection and then move my tool 
in the airbrush mode. I'm going to start sculpting out this area. Spawn's going to have a cast shadow, so I'm going to hit that now. <clears throat> this is the shadow from Spawn's body, and then the rest of it's just also the shadows from where the rings, the uh, wings are. Again, this is kind of just getting the general shape. Okay, I'm going to have him hit from behind with a little bit of a cool blue in that shadow condition that's in this cast shadow. It's kind of a dramatic thing. And you'll see how I re as it gets rendered, it'll fit even better. All right, let's go ahead and start putting in our Now I'm just going to go ahead and start selecting a bunch of wing shapes. Not too small, I'm hitting pretty much the full shape of each little uh, feather. I'm going with a lighter color next. Okay. Again, I'm letting them fade off as they kind of go away from the light. Holding the shift key, doing multiple selections. If you're beginning doing this, I might not do as many s selections as I'm doing right now. I kind of know where I'm going with it. There's one big feather right here. Private selection. Again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to hit the whole thing. I mean, if I hit the whole thing, then it's a little too strong. So I just want to kind of, you know, hint at the shapes and let them fade off. I think that's much more interesting.
You always hit the uh, Alt key and remove part of a selection if you don't think it's working. Again, these are still kind of general shapes. I'm going to do a little blurring to this afterwards, but I'll show you how that works. A little bit bigger brush. I think uh, you should always, that's something we didn't talk about before, when you're uh, working, uh, have your preferences set on brush size so you can see the size of your brush. Uh, if you're just working with a little crosshair tool, I think uh, you really can't control it as well. Okay, I'm going to do the parts that are getting hit next to the cast shadow. Too many feathers on this piece. That's okay. I'm going to fade these out, but I need to have something there for when I fade out. And you'll notice also the line art doesn't continue down there, but it looks kind of weird without any kind of hint of feathers. So I'm going to add them even though they're not there in the line art. But again, I'm just going to let it fade. Hit it harder up on top and let it fade out on the bottom. zoom out every once in a while to see how everything is working together. Let me go ahead and save. Again, still using the brush tool. The closer you're in, from 66% to 100%, the smoother your selections will be. Uh, if you want to color farther out uh, and your hands a little jittery, if you still want smooth selections, you can set up uh, the selections to be smooth with just a, a punch action. Uh, one of your keys, you can set it up, whatever, smoothing two pixels, one pixels, whatever. I often do that if I'm going fast and I know I'm going to be coloring zoomed out. Since we're really coloring for screen size here, it's okay. Alright, selection, brush tool harder on the top part where the light is and then losing it as it goes down.
Okay. I'm just kind <coughs> of eyeballing it and deciding what I need to do next. Start doing the... Uh, Moving shapes and or feather shapes in here. Holding the shift key again, so I can grab a bunch of them. You know, I wouldn't use the uh, the anchored lasso for this because it takes too long. You don't really need that. Again, we're kind of throwing shapes that just are 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 hinting at feathers. They're not exactly feathers. You know, half of Half of the art of this stuff is really just getting the, the symbols and what makes the eye kind of, oh, okay, those are feathers, you know. They're not exactly feathers, or kind of, but they make you think of feathers, so that's what we're after. Yeah, I'm just going to let it fade off. Same thing on this side. very few history stages set up on this and so I don't want to have that option to jump too far back I think you have to make a commitment when you're doing this stuff and if you have too many undos it gets in the way Me do some sort of catastrophic accident where I need to have many of undoes and eat my words. Uh, okay, I'm just going to generally block in this one area where they have such a, a bunch of negative rendering, so I'm not going to go in there and render the little hair things, but I'm going to put some color behind it. still have the selection. No, going to our flat so I can get those wings again. Clicking back onto my background layer. Start bringing in some cool color down here. Start doing these shapes down here. Just trying to follow the forms that the guys have set up already. We don't want to fight against that ink line. We want to complement it. Or pencil line, depending on what you're coloring.
Okay. I'm going to do a little bit more of a highlight pass now through the wings. Smaller friskets than the first pass. So we'll add another layer of detail to the appearance of the wings. Put it all the way to 100% brightness and almost to white. Even brighter. shapes. Okay. See so by going really hard right next to that shadow kind of emphasizes the shadow.
Okay, go on the airbrush tool, go up. A lot of rendering going on in these wings. Okay, but well, we're almost there. And we can go next to our fine tuning our background and our heavenly light effect. If you guys have any questions uh, that you know maybe I go over or just skip or something or you missed, uh, on the uh, website digital www.digitalarttutorials.com, it's also on the package um, for the CD. You, there's a message board. You can always ask questions. I usually get on. You know, I try my best to do weekly, but it's pretty close to that regardless. And you can ask me whatever question, whatever you have there. Okay, that looks good. Or better. Right, he's looking a little bit more angelic to me. Can we do another quick pass at these feathers? I'm gonna do some other, well you'll see. The bluey ones. Again, this is the idea of just getting a little bit of reflected light. It's not a strong blue, it's kind of a nice little pale blue. A little more saturated, a little brighter. Ten fins for your coloring, but that's a general good rule of thumb. Okay, now I'm going to want to uh, fade some of these as they go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these feathers. I'm going to copy it, paste. I'm going to Gaussian Blur. Okay. Then I'm going to go with the race and kind of gently go between the, the focus feathers and the unfocus and just Letting them kind of towards the bottom, I want them to get softer. Mm. Nice and soft. This was before, and that's after. It just kind of softens them up a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and just merge that layer down into my background layer. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Control C, Control V, okay. or Command, and then I can just do the same blur because it saves it up here. And then I'll do the same thing with just erasing back a little bit, go towards the top, and I'll fade off towards the bottom. Merge that down. Okay. Now Todd has the splatter effect, so I'm just going to do a loose selection here and bring my background color up into that. Yep, yep, yep. Should be going more towards the cool, so it's.
can go ahead and separate out this wing a little bit more like there's some haze going in there and that will justify that splatter a little bit more. this by adding, holding the shift key, there we go, helps pull that wing forward too by doing this. I'm going to go over the top of the line art there in a little bit, but not right now. So, all right, we are very close. Let's go ahead and save again. All righty, all right, let's work on our heavenly light. All right, so we're gonna do another layer above the line art layer. This layer will be in screen mode. And I'm just going to do some rays of light. These are going to be the bigger rays of light and the more subtle ones. You'll see they will look quite hard. Pardon me, hitting the mic. Uh, they'll look quite hard to begin with, but since they're on a layer, we have infinite control over them. So I'm going to hide them. I'm going to pick kind of an orangey color. I'm going to go to the grad tool. Foreground to transparent is how it's set up. I'm just going to pull it down. Okay. Now you're gonna go, oh, that's too hard, but stay with me, okay? I'm gonna do uh, smaller hits. get a brighter color. Let me hit that again. We're just going to see how this comes out first. Yeah, we're going to hit that again a little bit brighter still. Okay. Now again, you're thinking, ah, oh, that's no way to do that. Well, there's a method to my madness. Um, what I'm going to do now, make sure you don't have it selected anymore. Go filter, blur, let's go motion blur. I just want to soften it up. That's kind of nice. So let's go with that. Okay. I'm going to just hit the big shot up here where the light is coming out of the clouds. I'm going to put this behind spawn, but in the meantime, Just gonna kind of make sure it's coming out all nice and. I like putting in a little bits of uh, kind of like dust motes or whatever you want to call them, just because they add to the. So it's not just a clean, pristine sort of. There's something in the air.
Okay. Now I want to put that behind him, so I'm going to make a layer mask for it. Um, so I'm going to go back to our wonderful flats. Another good reason to have flats. Okay. Yeah, be careful when you're too zoomed out. Sometimes you won't see details. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing. If there's anything I am missing, I can always just oops, snag it. Inverting that selection and. I'm making it my layer mask. So there, now the light is behind spawn. Now I'm going to take off, there's a little lock here that, that, that puts the two, the mask and the uh, color behind it, but I want to play with the portions of that light. And by taking that off, I don't, my layer mask doesn't move with it. I'm like, well, um, oops. That's on my phone. Okay. Just want to narrow it up a little bit, maybe turn it a little bit. See the control you have? It's really nice. can do one undo to see if you like it better. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Let my sky be a little darker up towards the top, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in some dark clouds back there. And we are pretty much done. I noticed down here on the effect I uh, when I moved it, I caught an edge. So I'm just going to go ahead with the, the erase tool and just get rid of that. Let it fade off. In uh, the original piece that I colored, I had a couple of darker clouds up on top that were breaking through. And what I might do if I was going to if I was going to play with that would be uh, taking the layer and uh, put some dark clouds on top of this area. But I kind of like it this way too. I'm just going to go in and tweak the clouds a little bit so I have a little bit of the dodge tool, so I have a little bit of that rim lighting. find that shape coming out of the clouds. Now I'm kind of doing the quick job of this. Normally I would take a little more time than I'm doing now, but I have so much space on these CDs. I'm going to include the original piece that I did with this PSD so you can see some of the different choices I made this time around.
Okay. Let me go ahead and save. And when I come back, I'm going to res this thing up and put on a line art. Okay, we're going to res up the piece um, and do a couple of tweakings on the high res. Sometimes you notice things, but let's uh, res it up first so we can put our uh, high res black line back on. So we're going to go image size. I'm going to go 300 dpi. By cubics. Uh, will leave you the smoothest uh, uprising. So we'll do that. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to take a little bit because again I'm just on a Pentium 3 on this. So I'm going to actually pause the recording now and so you guys don't have to sit and watch this thing. Okay, it's all rezzed up now. So I'm going to open up uh, our original scan of the line art. Control A or Command A, Command C to copy the whole thing. Paste it in. Command or Control V. I'm going to get rid of that low res layer line art. I'm going to put this in multiply mode. I'm going to get rid of my flats because I don't really need them anymore. Now there's a couple tweaks that I wanted to do. Well, a couple things I could only do with the high res line art. Uh, you'll notice. Let me go in closer. They see this area here where the where the uh, effect. That's from the, the light is going to line art up here too in the feathers. Because we use the uh, color flats as our uh, mask on that layer. So what we're going to do is be in the line art layer. And I'm going to select the black line art. I'm going to select similar so we get it all. I'm going to go into the mask channel. Notice I'm hitting on the mask, not the color part. And you can tell that too where you get the little circle mask symbol in the box there. And I'm going to alt delete black. And you can see now all the feathers are back and everything. Now you can only do that with a high res line art because um, uh, if you do it with low res, low res would be anti alias when it comes up and it won't exactly match anymore. Uh, so that's the way you do that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was to, I'm going to make another layer and I wanted to knock back the line art. Down here. Where his splatter is. computer doesn't like working on this thing at, uh, at 300 dpi. It's a little underpowered for it. Okay, so there I just kind of knocked back that line art just a little bit by going over the top. Alright. And that's pretty close to it. I'm going to flatten this now. Um, if we were going to print uh, depending on how the printing is done, sometimes you can go ahead and just flatten this and see if I can't. But that's going to be a whole other thing. I'm going to try and put that sort of more technical documents on the website for you and, and, and on the CD and the frequently asked documents. I'm not going to go through CMYKing this. Um, but if you want to send it off to print as an inkjet or a G clay or whatever, you can always just right here just flatten image. Go Pentium 3, go! All right.
Alrighty. And I've cropped that frame out that I was using because I didn't crop my line art to begin with. Let's use the crop tool. And the only other thing I wanted to try, last final touch. I'm going to switch my brush tool to smooth and hard, and opacity up to 100. And I just want to kind of have his line art up here be affected. And a little bit of a rim light sort of thing on his shoulders and in the feathers. Maybe too much, but again, I just, you know, want to try it, so let's try it. It either works or it doesn't. And since we got in a layer, I can always undo it or tone it down or whatever. We hit the feather tops as well. I'm going to go a little sloppy because I'm going quick. just want to see how this is all kind of working. I can always go back in and clean it up, you know, with erasing and, and, and using the uh, smudge tool. Same area that would pretty much be hit by it. And you're getting some flyaways in there. There's kind of feathery shapes. And again, you can see if I use the, uh, the smudge tool, I can really kind of wisp out these edges just by pulling them. That one got a little out of control. Let's squash that back down. Just lightly hitting them. Really getting them to pull out to those nice little points. You can go ahead and go back to my airbrush mode. Soften up a little bit of this. Let's see if the screen mode makes this work a little better. Yeah, it brightens it up a little bit more. There you go. And it's either too much or it's it's good. I might continue it down a little bit more on that side. But anyway, it was just an idea. I'm going to go ahead and finally save this. I'm going to save it as a layer file just so you guys can see how that works. Do spawn. Sure. The other thing that you might want to play with on your own after you do a piece like this is at the end you can always do a little levels and see if it needs a little more contrast, a little less, you know. Uh, it's a good way to pop a piece. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Um, this was a fun piece to do. And we're going to have a lot more. We're going to be doing digital inking, some 3D stuff digital painting, you name it. Um, so please stay tuned to our uh, next set of tutorials. Thanks.